Alright, uh, so welcome everyone again. Um, my name is Raj and I will speak about data-driven change in the quantification uh, for value-robust uh, system design. And much of what I do is in parallel to what's happening in the department. Uh, we have seen about uh, presentations about value, about data and everything. But one thing that is that I bring in is that I look at value from a time perspective and how uh, we will see uh, as we go along the presentation. So what's the motivation of my research? Like complex systems usually go through a lot of uncertainty in their operational phase. And this in turn leads to risks in them not delivering the intended value. If we could develop a system that could be changed so that we can have or avoid those risks, uh, then we, we in some sense have a value robust system. So this picture basically see, uh, explains why we need uh, a changeable system uh, because we want to avoid the risks. And a simple example that I like to give to uh, to everyone when I speak is the, the example of nuts and bolts because we've always opened it. We have so many different kinds of bolts and nuts that we want to open and then we have so many different tools and now we have to manage it. So we as engineers have come up with innovative solutions to that. And for example, this, is a kind of a flexible solution. This is an adaptable solution that just adapts to the size of the bolt that you want to open. And then this is an example of scalable one. You see, each of these solutions have their own pros and cons. And it is a difficult uh, question usually in terms of engineering design. Which one do we wish to go ahead with and why? And that's where I come up with this uh, simple graph of value versus time. That we, we, we should start seeing at value as not just instantaneous point, but over time when it, it goes through many different contextual changes. So this is example, let's say our design A or our product or whatever, it, it has some value that it has to deliver. And then as the time, if there is no change, it will still keep delivering the value that it has to deliver. But at some point, uh, there will be changes in the requirements. There will be changes in the user preferences. There will be changes in the context where it's been used. So you will see a sudden drop of value at that given point. It could be a continuous one. I show it in a discrete form just to make it a bit comprehensive. But if we were able to change it somehow so that we can may not eliminate the value deterioration completely, but at least to some level, then we do have some sort of value robustness in our system. We keep on repeating that cycle for several different contexts that we could imagine while designing, and then basically try to minimize, which I say as the variance of value as a function of time, we could achieve a value robust system. And then we have to now start plotting what are the, the drivers that change so that our system needs to change and we, we we could generalize it in the change in requirements change in context change in the system itself like my system deteriorates or uh, needs maintenance quite often and then you start depreciating as well so this uh, uh, picture is where my research is focused on and i'm trying to minimize or trying to understand how can we achieve these results when we start designing a solution especially in the early stages this picture also, again, explains the same thing, but in a different way. Uh, so if you see that when we design a value for one given con uh, a system for one given context, the system that may have the best value in the initial phase, the, the red dot, may not be the one that has the most value as time passes. So these are all uh, integrate, integrate decisions that we need to make uh, to assess our system and hence our uh, design in, in in the uh, design stage. And the main challenge here is to see changeability as some sort of a decision uh, uh, yeah, uh, constraint, where if, if, we, if we go for a very rigid system, and then we always say, oh, if the system fails, let's just use another standby system. Then, of course, you do not have any cost of investments for that, but you have a lot of cost of changing itself. And, and on the other side, if you if you go for a super adaptable, flexible system that can do everything at once, you know, radical changing system, then you might have to do a lot of investment in in the beginning. You might have that system will be maybe really expensive as well. So 
there is always a balance and we need we, we wish to find that balance which is the cost effective change for our system and and that's where my research comes in especially today when we are always looking at complex systems from a system of system perspective that how can we quantify change from a system of system perspective to support early design decisions and i i can dive a lot deeper into how these frameworks and how these models all work but the point here is to give you a brief overlook of what are the methods and tools that I integrate uh, to achieve the result. And it boils down as of now to these three uh, tools that are really popular in research. Uh, meta heuristic optimization, or we call it uh, uh, yeah, uh, non gradient based optimization algorithms that we have been using since the past 20 years. Uh, discrete event simulation, I think Marco spoke a lot about it uh, in his presentation. Uh, and dynamic programming, which is Similar to like brute force analysis, we try to map every other possibility that we can and then see what's the best result. And with these tools, in the beginning of my uh, uh, PhD, uh, we were able to achieve some results. And this is a quick overview of results from one hauler uh, that I work with uh, with Volvo uh, construction elements, and we 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 try to analyze what could be the effect of different gradients, different temperatures, and different loading conditions on it on the velocity profile of it, and then trying to plot the Pareto front of what should be the configuration of the system with these uh, boxes here to to be able to have the best su suitable hauler for a given mining scenario. We also were able to expand this study from our system of system perspective, where we, we started looking at oh, how do these uh, haulers and other vehicles behave uh, in, in, a, in a swarm, which is something called a system of systems as well. And what is the effect of charging points and infrastructure on, on this? And do the systems that were optimal as a standalone are still optimal in, in such a uh, complex uh, site as well. And then we, we start to make uh, some uh, measure of effectiveness uh, as against measure of performances in, in this picture. But overall, we, we encountered challenges uh, in this framework itself. Uh, and it boils down to these three broad uh, challenges where one, we do not know what are the contextual changes that we are dealing with in uh, in, in our site, what what could change? Uh, what what is an internal change, and what is an external change, and should we be caring about it, and all those things. The next problem is computational complexity, and and this is something related to our computational power. That if we try to simulate that many aspects at once, we we might end up in a situation that our results will come maybe years later, even if not months. So uh, there is a limit to how many scenarios we can simulate. And third, even if we were able to simulate all of this, usually uh, people from different cross disciplines uh, have difficulties in interpreting the results. You know, we, we usually see numbers, but they is, is that the best way to deliver the results to the community? Can we can we do better? And 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 that's where uh, my PhD also comes into picture. That we are trying to intervene in, to these three aspects. And you can see that in this framework where these uh, improvement opportunities are uh, as marked by one, two, and three. And, and first is to integrate operational data in the framework. Can we simplify physics-based uh, models by surrogate models and see if we have uh, uh, results that are uh, uh, better uh, than what we can achieve right now? Can uh, Second is, can we replace dynamic programming or such brute force uh, uh, computational techniques with some uh, advanced techniques that we have today, like reinforcement learning, for example. And the third is uh, the visual environment. And can can we now visualize or simulate these things in a 3D environment? Like, uh, for example, Marco showed some work of Julia and, uh, and others in our department that uh, are trying to address perceptual limitations of our uh, uh, brains. Uh, can we, can we, make better decisions if you were able to uh, visualize these and this uh, is like a brief summary of what where i'm trying to focus uh, and in in turn where changeability is an outcome of this method but it needs some interventions in these three points uh, and yes uh,
that would be all from my side.